Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at Universal City. I'm Conan Nolan. First up, a representative of the Trump-Pence 2020 re-election campaign on the issues of impeachment, plus that debate that took place in Los Angeles at LMU on Thursday. Mark Lauder is the head of strategic communications for Trump 2020. So, uh, impeachment. Uh, the president has said that this was going to be good for his campaign, actually, and you have record fundraising efforts. Assuming nothing happens in the Senate, uh, that he will be exonerated, is it your feeling, based on the polls that we've seen, that when it comes to the re-election of the president, it will not be based on impeachment, it's going to be based on all sorts of other things? Well, I think we're still almost a year away from the election, so it's, it's very hard to predict what will be dominating in that time frame. But I think what it does show is that you have a Democrat party that has been convinced on impeachment, have been focused on it since day one, and in fact, some cases before the president even took office, we saw this march toward impeachment. And when you look at those fundraising numbers, just $5 million raised yesterday alone, and 600,000 new donors to our campaign and to the, RN, to the Republican National Committee since Speaker Pelosi announced the impeachment inquiry. It shows that a lot of people are coming out of the woodwork. They're reaching out to our campaign. We've seen a huge surge in, vo in volunteer interest, in donor interest. And so I do think it's pushing a lot of folks, maybe those in the middle, are going, I don't like the way this has been handled by the Democrats. Based on the polling we've seen, though, if you were for the president before impeachment, you're still for him. If you were opposed to the president before impeachment, you're still opposed to him. So it was a push. But in many cases, though, that's those in the middle, those who could go either way, those who may have had a history of voting Democrat in the past. Are there maybe any of they them voted. left? There might be. There are a few of those left. And, the, and those who even voted for maybe President uh, Trump in 2016, we're, we're seeing that interest. And, and in this case, it's really so important that when we have, are able to identify those people, we can make sure that they get out to the polls. We, we can make sure they have the information they need. Let's talk about some of those centrist voters, centrist Republicans, women with college degrees in suburban communities. Orange County, California is now solidly Democrats, six Democrat members of the, of the House of Representatives, four of them elected to 2018. The polls indicate that suburban women went overwhelmingly to the Democratic side. How do you get them back? I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to talk about the facts, and we're going to have to make it clear to them that when you look at what this president has been able to accomplish, whether it's on the economy, growing paychecks, lower taxes, we have more jobs available now than we do unemployed people. For the first time in America, people aren't looking for jobs. Jobs are looking for people. That brings economic security. That helps women who can rise up quicker in through the corporate ranks, get that job, get more money. And then when you look at things like what the president is doing in uh, tough immigration stand on the southern border, that's helping try to keep drugs out of our communities, try to keep gang members from coming across and posing a real threat to folks in our community. We've got to get to a place, and you even saw that in the television ad that we ran during the World Series in Game 7, that President Trump was not elected to be a Mr. Nice Guy, but sometimes you have to have that to get some things done. And I think when we take that message, we can show the results, we can show what has been accomplished, and even have it be that some folks go, I don't necessarily love everything that's tweeted or how it's tweeted, but it's hard to argue with the results. I think some voters on the Republican side, some of those centrist women believe that we're waiting for him to try to bring the country together. And there's been no effort by this president whatsoever to try to bring in centrist Democrats, uh, centrist Republicans, so that he gets over 50 percent in approval. He's yet to hit that. Well, I, but, I would, but I would argue, though, that he's doing it again through, that, through the results. When you take a look at some of the things like last in Wednesday when he was in Battle Creek, Michigan, 15 percent of the folks who were at that rally had not voted in the last election and nearly 20 percent and we it range anywhere between 20 and 25 percent of the people who are coming to those rallies are registered democrats so he is leading and bringing new people into the republican party we see it among labor members blue collar workers we're even seeing record high approval ratings for a republican in recent years with people of color with with black americans who are seeing the economic successes of this president and we're seeing them come out of the woodwork and reaching out to us and saying, I may not be able to put on a red MAGA hat, but I'm going to go into that ballot box and I'm going to check the box for President Trump. Some have suggested, you know what, when, when Mike Pence was brought onto the ticket in 2016, a guy you know very well because you've worked for him for, him for a long time, it was, it was so that Donald Trump could get a character reference with the religious evangelical Christian community. He has that now. 
some have suggested what he needs is a suburban college-educated woman and that Nikki Haley might be a better running mate than Mike Pence in 2020. Well, I think, I, well, not only would I disagree with that, I think the president would disagree with that as well. He's actually said it on numerous occasions, including just recently, that Vice President Pence is his running mate, is his partner in the White House. He changes his mind. That's not, no, I don't think that's going to change. Uh, this, this team is completely committed to re-electing President Trump and Vice President Pence. And I think if we've known anything through history, A, this, this type of talk always happens when you have an incumbent president uh, of either party running for re-election. And for the most part, people don't vote for the bottom of the ticket. They vote for the president or the presidential candidate at the top of the ticket. And so in this case, while I understand it makes great fodder in political circles, and there are some people out there, uh, I'm not naming names, who are actually having their people push this narrative, uh, this president is absolutely committed to, uh, to Vice President Pence, and I know Vice President Pence is committed to working to reelect the president. When you see Boris Johnson in the Great, great Britain winning centrist votes mm -hmm. because the party, the Labor Party, had nominated somebody who was just too far to the left, you have to be rooting for a progressive on the Democratic side. I think that that's likely where they're going to go. Even when you see some of the, the policies by even so-called moderates, they have taken some very liberal leftist policies out there. Joe Biden, who spent 30 years in Congress fighting against taxpayer-funded abortion, has now abandoned that policy and said, no, taxpayers should be forced to pay for abortion. You see him even going out there and saying that illegal immigrants should be getting free health care, something that Barack Obama didn't even include when he, when, he did the, when he did Obamacare. So these are very radical positions that I don't think are going to set well with the majority Majority of Americans. It might win you a primary in the Democrats, but it's not going to win you the general election. And we look forward to having that battle. And finally, uh, this is an unfriendly turf for you. California voted for Hillary Clinton by 4.3 million votes. The Republican Party in this state is now behind registered uh, independence or non party preference. How does the, a, a tr Trump-led Republican Party rebuild that party in California? Well, I think first off, we've got we've to make sure we have the discussion, which is one of the reasons why I'm out here. It's one of the reasons why we will have other people out here in California, because it is important, especially in those congressional races. There are seats that we can take back, and we plan to take them back, especially with President Trump at the top of the ticket in 2020. But we also have to do something that President Trump has actually said, and he has gone into traditional Democrat strongholds and said, what do you have? to lose what do you have to lose and then highlight the failures of the allegiance that many of these groups have shown to Democrats and what they've gotten for it in response we can have that discussion and I think we can have it here in California as well we just have to have we just have to have the courage to go in there face the tough questions and then provide the answers and the results Mark Lauder head of strategic communications for the Trump Pence 2020 re-election campaign up next Jessica Levinson of Loyola Law School and Carla Maranucci of Politico when we return.